non-commissioned officers, soldiers, and civilians of the 264th Medical Battalion would like to welcome you to the change of command ceremony between Lieutenant Colonel Michael C. Story and Lieutenant Colonel Corbyn A. Abraham. The host for today's ceremony is Colonel Wesley J. L. Anderson, the commander of the 32nd Medical Brigade. Today, we are joined by distinguished guests, visitors, and friends of the Joint Base San Antonio Fort Sam Houston community and the 264th Medical Battalion. Among them are the 32nd Medical Brigade Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Gilberto Colon, and all commanders, Command Sergeants Major, soldiers, and civilians in attendance. Thank you for attending today's ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the front row of the theater as we honor the families of the outgoing and incoming commanders. <coughs> At this time, Staff Sergeant George Wugacha, a member of the Fort Sam Houston Audie Murphy Club, is presenting the outgoing commander's wife, Karen, with a bouquet of red rose. As a symbol of our respect, love, and sincere appreciation for her many contributions and support to the 264th Medical Battalion. Additionally, Staff Sergeant Wugacha is presenting Lieutenant Colonel Story's children, Ava and Gary, with a gift from their father. At this time, Staff Sergeant Wogacha is presenting Lieutenant Colonel Abraham's wife, Buggy, with yellow roses to symbolize her arrival to the 264th Medical Battalion. Through the years to come, may she forge a strong bond with the soldiers, civilians, and family members of the 264th Medical Battalion. Additionally, Staff Sergeant Wogacha will present Lieutenant Colonel Abraham's children with a gift from their father. ceremony features honors to the nation, the presentation of troops, followed by the change of command, and concludes with the singing of the Army song. The commander of troops for today's ceremony is Major Andrew H. Gilker, the 264th Medical Battalion Executive Officer. Ladies and gentlemen, Please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the national anthem sung by Colonel Princess Atenrasse and the invocation delivered by Chaplain Renny John. The official party for today's ceremony consists of the commander, 32nd Medical Brigade, Colonel Wesley J. L. Anderson, the outgoing commander, Lieutenant Colonel Michael C. Stord, and the incoming commander, Lieutenant Colonel O'Brien A. Abraham. Oh. 
let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your holy presence at this change of command ceremony. Thank you for strengthening, helping, and upholding Lieutenant Colonel Michael's story with your righteous right hand while he served as the battalion commander. Your loving and caring hands were also present with his wife, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Karen Story, and with their children, Eva and Gareth. Thank you for your plans to prosper and fill them with your hope and enrich the, them with a bright future. Lord, I express gratitude for your choice, choice of Lieutenant Colonel Cord Bryan Abraham to lead this battalion from this day. Help your servant to be strong and courageous. Continue to fill him with your wisdom, love, and strength to lead the formation courageously every day. Holy God, continue to bless his wife, Lieutenant Colonel Lovey Abraham, and their children, Caleb and Leanna Abraham. Let your servants experience your mighty presence and heavenly peace every day. Let your blessings be upon our soldiers and their families, especially our brothers and sisters serving overseas. Hide everyone under your wings. Thank you for keeping our land safe and protecting our territories from the evil one. Amen. Please be seated. The formations assembled in front of you represent the 1,300 personnel assigned to the 264 Medical Battalion. The units represented today, viewed from left to right, are Headquarters and Headquarters Detachment, commanded by First Lieutenant Junior Felix and Sergeant First Class Tamira T. Johnson. The Battalion Headquarters and Headquarters Detachment is responsible for the Mission Command, administrative support, training, and logistical support to all assigned and attached personnel. Alpha Company, commanded by Captain Kyle R. Pacencia and First Sergeant Francisco I. Olivo. Alpha Company is responsible for the instruction of two military occupational specialties. Bravo Company, commanded by Captain Caitlin A. Stone and First Sergeant Cody S. Waymeyer. Bravo Company is responsible for the instruction of six military occupational specialties and one preparatory course. Charlie Company, commanded by Captain John K. Valerie and First Sergeant Cheris D. Long. Charlie Company is responsible for the instruction of four military occupational specialties and three functional courses. Delta Company, commanded by Captain Martha L. Biafrade and First Sergeant Nathaniel J. Jones. Delta Company is responsible for the instruction of three military occupational specialties. The Battalion Color Guard is comprised of soldiers assigned to the 264th Medical Battalion and is led by Drill Sergeant Luis Coriano, Drill Sergeant James Binswanger, Staff Sergeant Andre Blunt, and Drill Sergeant David Shrewsbury. Our next event is the Change of Command. The Change of Command is a simple yet traditional event that is rich with symbolism and heritage. The key to the ceremony is the passing of the commander's colors. The very soul of a military unit is symbolized in the, in the colors under which it fights, representing not only the lineage and honors of the unit, but also the loyalty and unity of its soldiers. The guardian of the organizational colors is the command sergeant major. She is the senior enlisted soldier in the battalion and the principal advisor to the commander for all enlisted issues. By authority of Army Regulation 600-20, paragraph 2-12, the undersigned assumes command of the 264th Medical Battalion, effective 15 July 2021, signed for Brian A. Abraham, Lieutenant Colonel, MS Commanding. The ceremony begins as Command Sergeant Major Adams passes the 264th Medical Battalion colors to Lieutenant Colonel Story for the last time. Lieutenant Colonel Story passes the colors to Colonel Anderson, signifying the relinquishment of his command of the 264th Medical Battalion. Colonel Anderson then passes the colors to the incoming commander, Lieutenant Colonel Abraham, 
charging the new commander with the responsibility and authority of the 264th Medical Battalion. Lieutenant Colonel Abraham passes the colors back to Command Sergeant Major Adams, who returns the colors to the color bearer, completing the circle and signifying trust and confidence in the non-commissioned officer corps. soldiers in this battalion, Colonel Story. I want to recognize the uh, guests that are here, all of you, everybody. Recognize yourself, all right? All right, because everybody here is special. It's not an individual sport, right? This is a team effort. No one of us is more important than the other. It's all about working together as a team. I think Colonel Story has done that. Colonel Abraham, I know you will, all right? so. Colonel Douglas, we will recognize you though. How's it going? <laughs> doing all right? Well, all right, cool. All right, Garrett, how you doing? I told, I'm, this is your day, Garrett, because until you smile, it is not going to end. Now, you don't believe me, but if you haven't seen one of these before, you will by the end. All right. So let's start off welcoming Colonel Story's family. Karen, how you doing? All right, retired. Congratulations. Ava? How you doing, Ava? All right, and Garrett's not going to raise his hand. He ain't figured it out yet, but he will. And Garrett, how you doing, Garrett? Won't work. Won't work, brother. All right, let's say, welcome the Abraham family as well. Uh, joined by his wife, Lieutenant Colonel Levy. Abraham, how you doing, ma'am? All right, and his son, how you doing? Think I'm going to get your name right, Caleb? I got it. All right, and Caleb plays football, who? Huh? All right, I think you picked the right state for football. All right. And his daughter, Leanna, how you doing? You're going into high school, right? No? <laughs> Not yet? All right. All right. A little more diverse background with the sports, though. I think you are going to have trouble finding a lacrosse team, but you'll be all right with the, uh, the volleyball and soccer, definitely. All right. Lacrosse, I'm not sure. Anybody? Is there a lacrosse team in this, in this city? Anybody know? All right. Start doing some research. She wants to play lacrosse. All right. And also, the parents, Lee, Rosie. How's it going? All right, good. All right, father-in-law James. All right, how you doing? Brother-in-law James Mathis the second, right? All right, you gonna have a third? No. No? He's gonna cut, <laughs> cut it right there at the seconds. All right. All right, and the nephew, James? Hello. All right, how's it going? Good. All right, you been to one of these before? It's not, all right, good. So you know the difference. This is not normally how they go. It's all right, though. <laughs> all right, and family friend, Cody. Welcome. Thank you for being here. All right, another distinguished guest, commanders, command sergeants, majors, friends, family, soldiers, non-commissioned officers, officers, civilians, and supporter of the 264th. It's good to see the civilians here again. And it's not all about, we always get confused, right? Because we always normally just see, especially at this level, a bunch of green suitors, right? But again, the foundation and the core of this organization are our civilians. So we appreciate you being here. All right, let's give them a round of applause over there. All right, just want to bottom line, thank everybody for being here. It's important to show the support for these battalion commanders and the work they've done and they're going to do. So I appreciate everybody, everybody being out here as we celebrate the change of command for a, an exceptional battalion commander and what I'm sure will be an exceptional battalion commander. 
Colonel Crossland called this morning. She said, or General Crossland called this morning. She had a couple of things she wanted me to work on with you, but I'm like, I, I think you'll be all right, ma'am. So, but she has all the faith and confidence. She knows you're going to do a good job, and she's wishing you well. All right. It is a bittersweet moment as we do say farewell to Lieutenant Colonel Promotable story. Everybody tracking he's promotable, right? Cool. All right. He's going to be leaving us, going to the Senior Service College, then followed by another command. Um, at this time in a career, that definitely demonstrates somebody that's a little bit above the power curve. Um, Lieutenant Colonel, I was still hoping to make Colonel, right? And you already lined up your next command, and that's, that's a tremendous, tremendous nod on the Army um, in, your, in your abilities. And also the words that we heard this morning from your, your soldiers, that means a lot. You know, it's not just about what we say up here or what we do up here. It's about what your soldiers do and think, because that's what it's about, taking care of your soldiers, your civilians, your, your family. All right. Also, I'd like to thank the uh, soldiers involved and civilians involved in the ceremony. Again, everybody knows this stuff doesn't just magically happen. What we're going to do in 30, 40 minutes takes hundreds of hours of preparation because nobody wants to, to mess it up. Nobody wants to let their, their leadership down. They want to make it a special day. So thank you for that. Chaplain, good, good job. All right. Good job on the weather. All right, that's what they tell me. A Torres, where are you at, Colonel Torres? I'm right here. Hi, how's it going? Good, sir. Yeah, now the advantage of having Colonel Torres sing for you, is she's a very good singer. The disadvantage is her name is very hard to enunciate. So, two years I still haven't got, am I getting closer though? You're getting much closer. Much, <laughs> much closer. The first time she said that wasn't the first, yeah. <laughs> Never been yelled at for mispronunciating the name so badly, but she, she took it well though. All right, so please join me in a round of applause thanking everybody for that. <laughs> Made this ceremony very special, very special. All right, so first let's share a little bit about the mission of the 264. Anybody not know what the two, 264 does? 260, anybody? Everybody knows what that battalion does? All right, that'll save 20 minutes of this speech. All right. But it is a demanding job, it's diverse. This whole med COE is diverse, right? There, there is no simple job in this organization from drill sergeant, instructor, commander, you know, all the way up to the general. There, this, this is a unique beast. And, but it is where it all begins. I was thinking about the other day, really when we say this is where it all begins, Army Medicine starts here, really think about that, what we're saying. When we say Army Medicine starts here, they have the ability to shape the lives of thousands of soldiers. And Colonel Story's time and all the people that are supporting that, thousands of soldiers that now are in the operational force supporting us, supporting our mission, and keeping the soldiers alive downrange. That is a tremendous ability. It all starts in the Med COE, and it all starts with these battalion commanders. I think we overlook that sometimes when we use those mottos. We really don't think about what that really means. And what it means is you're shaping future generations. While you only had a chance for two years in command, which is normal, those thousands, about three, just short of 4,000, four or 5,000 that you've shaped, those will shape future ones. And it's, it's a tremendous honor that you've been given, and it's a tremendous honor that you now step into, Colonel Abraham, with your family. All right, but we, it's always important to, to state some facts. So I, I had asked Colonel Story for one to two items that he would like me to focus on. The, the, it was 22 pages. I said, no, no, focus. He goes, no, it, it, that is the focus. He said the first draft was 100 pages. So I narrowed it down a little bit. But bottom line, we would be here all day if we tried to list all the things that under Colonel Story's leadership in this battalion is done. But we are going to talk about it a few. During the reorganization, as you guys know, we went from two brigades to one. Eventually, I think within the next month, where's the three here? Not, not, the, not, the, not the brigade three. I know the brigade three is here. Is it? So in, well, Dr. Anderson's here. So in the next month or two, we, we will do the reorg and do the flagging and bring them in officially. But they have went down. You know, it's now officially gone under to, to one brigade. Um, 264 divested five of its officers program, one of its enlisted MOSs, two of its ASIs, and gained five enlisted 
programs, right? So we're talking 15 enlisted training programs, three functional courses, as well as realignment of eight programs within their battalion. So when we say reorg on a piece of paper, it's really easy. But when you talk about the leaders on the ground, these company commanders and their first sergeants and their soldiers that they represent on this field today, the work they did to make that happen is, is no simple feat. It is still going on today with movement of buildings and, and soldiers and all the other little things, like the little snowstorm dusting we had. Uh, you guys remember, what was that called, Yuri or something? Yeah, now I'm from Alaska, so that truly was a dusting, but it was an emotional event for San Antonio. <laughs> all right, and as I stated earlier, they've trained over 4,000 soldiers, but it's not just soldiers. They've also trained close to 1,000 DOD civilians. Again, this organization just isn't about soldiers leading soldiers. It's about family leading family, and it's about not just training the military's next generation, it's about training the civilians as well, and that's key. And then we also had this, what, what is it called again, Colonel Story, the COVID, 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 yeah, that's right. So we also had this COVID-19 thing going on for the last year, which is actually still going on. So, you know, we got the new variant, so just as a pitch, since I'm up here, just again, Distance even washing your hands, right? Because this new variant is not messing around, all right? It's breaking through even the, the vaccinations, right? So we're not getting people dead or in the hospital. So the vaccine's doing what it's supposed to do, right? Which is keep people from dying, but it doesn't keep you from getting it, right? So we're not over, but you definitely were in the bow wave of that. Uh, moving thousands of soldiers under s sterile techniques. Anybody, Work in the OR, it's not really sterile. I always cut, yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's okay, you can participate, it's, it's fine. Go ahead, yeah, it's fine, there you go. The, uh, it's not actually sterile, but the, the moving people under conditions that we have never trained for, we were never taught how to do, nor given the resources. I asked for a transportation officer, they laughed at me, right? But it's a testament again to these leaders and Colonel Story to be able to do something that's never been done before and to do it well. This is the only COE that didn't have a misfire. Close to 18,000 soldiers moved under those conditions and not one misfire. Every shipment we get is a misfire. I've, we've actually never gotten one that wasn't a misfire. Um, but it's fine, it's one family, right? We can make it happen, but it's these leaders that can fix those when it does happen, but never moving them out, taking that responsibility seriously. Up to the phone call at Friday, I think it was nine, 10 o'clock, your predecessor, hey, we gotta do this thing called sterile movement. And I'm like, um, I don't think you know what sterile means. Um, because I'm thinking like we can't even keep an, it's hard to keep an OR sterile, let alone a, a vehicle or a plane or anything else. But from a call around nine, 10 o'clock on a Friday to actually shipping them out on Monday under those conditions for something we've never done. And Colonel Story was part of that and his team. And it's, it's amazing to be able to do that. Uh, it's just a testament to your leadership. And, but don't worry, the fun's not over, Colonel Abraham. You will have lots of opportunities, lots of opportunities. Um, for stuff like that. Under Mike's leadership, they hosted the quarterly LPDs. Um, you know, for leadership professional development, I, I'm doing good when I get like MPD or somebody to come and talk at mine. He kind of raised the bar a little bit with that though. The Surgeon General, he didn't even take my calls. I don't know how you got him down here, right? But it's a family, right? He was able to express the importance of this development and it was important enough to get names like that that could focus and that's important to us and I appreciate that level of work. Drill Star of the Year, he's very, he wrote this like seven times so I was able to narrow some of his stuff down because he like repeated some of it in there. So I'm assuming this is very important to you but it is. You know, Drill Star of the Year in which years? Yeah, did you get 21? Yeah, it's been, you know, they haven't announced it? Oh, uh, all right, what? Two years, right? So he gave you, he gave you some room. They didn't get drill starting of the year this year. Two, three, two got it. Still in the family though, right? But uh, that's impressive, right? Again, showing the investment that he believes in his soldiers and that he's willing to put into his people. That investment is important. Um, you don't just magically become, no matter how talented you are, doesn't, you don't automatically get drill star of the year two times running. Well, nobody's even listening anymore. All right.
forgot about you, didn't you, Garrett? It's not going to work. But it is a family affair. It's a family business, and we're not successful without our families. So I appreciate the time and energy. And again, make sure this time, the next command, you set what time dinner is. You can't just say be home for dinner. you got to set a time. So he'll be good. He'll keep his promise. If he sets a time, he'll be there. He may leave again after dinner, but, but he'll be there. But I appreciate all the work you've done. All right. And have fun. Have fun at the War College. Have fun. You still got to learn, though, right? It's only a lot of reading if you do it. <laughs> right? But it's only an education if you do. Right? We only have four opportunities, really, in our careers to learn. Take this one serious. It's civil military, you know, that, that relationship between our civilian leaders, military leaders, how that works. Um, we're just a lever. Make sure you understand that. It's not not just about down and in, it's about how we facilitate our whole nation. So pay attention while you're there, but have fun. Spend some time with the family. But it's still, make sure you learn, all right? It's important. And then good luck. I know you'll do well at, at Weed. You'll, you'll be an excellent, excellent commander. You've got a great fit for that. You'll, you'll do really well there. All right, now let's welcome the future. Core Bryans Abraham. Now he doesn't go by Core Bryans. Um, I did. I did let General Crossland know it definitely wasn't Corey, though, this morning. She didn't think that was funny. I don't know why she didn't think that was funny, but I, I thought it was funny. I thought it was funny. Um, but it's coming to us from serving as XO Deputy Surgeon General. Right? As you guys know, those aren't, they don't just randomly put people in there in those positions. That definitely shows your abilities, capabilities, where you're going what you've done, and it brings a, a level of expertise that helps, right? How do you get resources? How do you get those resources to take care of your soldiers? That's important. Um, so it's a good, it's a good, I'm sure it wasn't easy. Um, I'm sure the days weren't short. Um, unfortunately, uh, Caleb, <laughs> the days ain't getting any shorter now. But hopefully he'll work with you. He'll be, he'll be there to, to help out. Um, but they're not gonna get shorter, but it's important. It's important that the time your dad is going to spend with, with these soldiers taking care of them is important. They're part of his family too. Huh? All right. See, he, he responds, Garrett. See, he's, he's interacting. I won't pick on him anymore. All right. All right. I'm just, I'm just letting you know. Just letting you know. All right. You can't stare me down, Garrett. It won't work. All right. Some of the projects they were talking, you know, readiness with the goal of continuing mentorship, development of commissioned officers. A lot of different projects you were working up there, Anton. It's important. Bring it here and execute those. Take it from the paper theoretical to the actual actionable. Colonel Abraham is a seasoned leader. He's been here before, so apparently we didn't we ruin you, right? I mean, it wasn't a horrific experience for you. All right. So a 70, 70 Charlie, health service comptroller, right? And again, I don't, I don't think we've talked about this before. It, we have a very diverse group of commanders, both all, all the way across, to be honest. And, and that's a strength. Uh, our strength is our diversity in every aspect. So those things that you bring to us are, are important. And I think that just makes this Med COE stronger. So I appreciate that. So now he may not know, is Fox, is there any 232 people in the house? No, they're too busy. Oh, there they are. Oh, thank goodness, because I was just about to talk bad about 232 that nobody showed up. There's your, all right, some of the, all right, good. Some of you, the command team there. You're just harassing your fellow brother, brothers and sisters out there on the field, weren't you? One of you guys can't see it, but one of them up there is making faces and waving at them. It, it's, it's not nice. It's not nice at all. But command of Foxtrot 232, which you probably don't know. I would be surprised if you did, but that's where I was a private. So not, not when you were in command, trust me. It's in the 80s, but uh, so I like it. I think it's one of the top 23 companies in the brigade. <laughs> Captain Patel's up there, yeah! Oh. All right, but also as an instructor, right? So you've seen both sides of the house. That's, that's critical. You've seen how the training works, and you've also seen how the instructors, and that, use that. Use that, because it's a team. It's not about just the command team, right? It's we're here to support the instructors, the mission of training, because that's what we're all about. We're here to train. We're not here, you know, 
to, to show who's in charge, who's not in charge. We're here to support them. And I think that perspective will be important for you because you've, you've seen both sides of it. And now you have the opportunity to command and make that relationship stronger. Cool? All right. So Anton, Mike's done an excellent job, as we've said. Now it's up to you to take that flag and continue to continue to move it forward and take care of those soldiers in the mission. Cool? And for you guys don't know, they switched out my speech again. Last time they put it up here, it was in Mandarin. This time they put it in German. Doesn't, doesn't matter, I can, still, I can still get through it. All right, I have no doubt that 264 will excel in its mission and assist the Army on its journey towards a future force of 2028. That's where we're going. And you've had that opportunity to sit at the, the higher tables to see how that melds. Um, now you can execute. Confident that your team will continue to give our commanders in the field the very best and train prepared soldiers that we need. Um, as we make Command Sergeant Major and I make our rounds, I've never talked to a, a brigade commander, or a brigade command sergeant's major division that aren't extremely happy with the product they're given every time. And that's a testament to everyone on this field, everyone in these bleachers. So be proud of what you're doing. Thanks again for joining us today. We'll let the commanders get up here and talk because um, that's what it's really about, the families and the commanders. May God bless the 264 team. May God bless our soldiers downrange in harm's way. And may God bless America. Army Medicine starts here. Cool. I made it. Woo! Hey, yeah, amen. Right, Chaplain? Hey, let the church say. Yeah. Hey, one, good morning, Medco team. Uh, what a great day, one, to be in the Army, right? Um, uh, welcome to all our distinguished leaders and special guests, both here present today and, and virtually. Uh, families of uh, both uh, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Abe, I call him Abe, right, and Lovey Abraham, thank you for spending some time with us here today. Um, Chaplain John, thank you for the, that wonderful invocation, and I would like to publicly and personally thank you um, for your consult and prayers over the last two years during my tenure. Um, it reminded me often that the battle is not ours. Uh, it belongs to God, and we have to trust God. And despite those changes and what sometimes may seem like chaos and challenges. As I look around today and this morning, I can't help but to think, uh, to thank God and, what he, and that he brought us here today. Okay. A special thank you to Princess uh, for that fantastic rendition uh, of our national anthem. Thank you for your friendship, because um, I know I can get your phone call away. And uh, uh, thank you for being here today and honoring us with your gift. Um, so please, let's give uh, both these leaders a round of applause. So, thank you. Uh, right up front, I want to thank my beautiful wife, Karen, and our children, uh, Ava and Garrett. Uh, I need to get this out soon, one, right, so I don't get emotional. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I shared this earlier, but I made a pact with Karen that uh, despite this demanding job, uh, I'll be home for dinner, right? Is that a, that's a true statement. Um, uh, every night, and we'll eat dinner at the dinner table. And I knew that was important to my children, uh, important to my wife, uh, now, uh, and the dogs as well, right, because uh, they expect me home. Uh, but, uh, but she often will remind me of the, uh, with the text, right, uh, when you're coming home or as I look outside, how come all the other husbands are home, uh, but you're not home, right? Uh, but I, it may have been a late dinner, but I, I came home. And, uh, but, I, but I appreciate you, uh, and I know that uh, uh, those are some late evenings. Uh, baby, any amount of thank you falls vastly short. Uh, I would not be me without you. I want to thank my children, because they too sometimes would be dragged in with dad uh, to walk through barracks, right? to attend soldiers' MWR events or even FTXs. And, uh, and I'll share a story real quick, because story's my name, right? Uh, that I, I brought Garrett out to one of the FTX, and I told Karen, I said, hey, get Garrett dressed in his fatigues, right, his, uh, his Halloween outfit. And uh, I come home, and Garrett's in a flight suit. <laughs> and I said, Garrett, we're not doing Top Gun. We're doing Army. So, uh, uh, but, but thank you to my family, right? Uh, they put up with a lot, and uh, just know that I love you. 
Now, I'm going to use the remainder of my time to do my very best to say thank you, but I know I'll fall short uh, in thanking everyone that had a hand in the success of the Mustang Battalion over the last two years. If I do fail to mention you, uh, please know it's out of my own cognitive shortcomings and not necessarily my lack of appreciation. At this point, I've embedded a great quote by the late American poet, civil rights activist perf uh, performer, Dr. Maya Angelou, where she states, I come as one, but I stand as 10,000. And what a powerful statement. As I reflect over the last two years, it's very hard to believe where the time has gone. But what has been clear to me uh, that in this battalion it has a storied tradition, a long tradition of success, and despite our changes or challenges, over the last two years we witnessed the transition from U.S. Army Medical Command to the U.S. Army Training and Doctrine Command. From the Army Medical Department Center and School Health Readiness Center of, of Excellence to the U.S. Army Medical Center of Excellence, from two training medical training brigades to one training brigade, from AIT platoon sergeants to drill sergeants in our formations, from the Army Physical Fitness Test to the Army Combat Fitness Test, and from the former Chief of Staff of the Army, priority of readiness is our number one, there's no other, to the now people first as our number one priority. Needless to say, the only thing that has been constant here is change. Luckily, despite the turbulence and times of change, what, rem what remained in constant was putting people first, always. Uh, and because people are first in our organization, military and civilian, this makes 264 an amazing place to work. Uh, because our team has be been able to weather the changes and the challenges. We have always led with a philosophy that it doesn't matter what pattern, patch, or color of your uniform. It doesn't matter where you work up the hill at Medco or down the hill at Metz, you're in the MIFs. It doesn't matter if you wear a professional civilian attire, it doesn't matter the type of headgear you wear, whether you wear the drill sergeant campaign hat or the patrol cap or a baseball cap, right? What matters here, ladies and gentlemen, in this joint training environment is that we all have impact. The impact is force multipliers. We are training DOD healthcare professionals to serve from the foxhole to the fixed facility, fact. Winston Churchill said that the destiny of man is not measured in material computation. When great forces on the move in the world we know that we are all spirits, not animals. And he said there's something gone in, in time and space and beyond time and space, which whether we like it or not, spells duty. And our 264 team understood this rendezvous with destiny. Thank you, Major General uh, Sergeant LeMaster, Sharp, Command Sergeant Major Charpentier, Colonel Anderson, Command Sergeant Major Jones, Cologne. Thank you for your leadership and guidance over the last two years. Especially I want to thank Colonel Wes, uh, Wes Anderson most don't see, but he puts in the work. He puts in the work. Late hours, behind the scenes, often setting conditions. Sir, I've always appreciated one of your many efforts to standardize process amongst the battalions. And I agree with you, very diverse, but our mission doesn't change, which is put out the best medically trained product out there. Uh, and, but your, your efforts to kind of decrease the variance and the turbulence and the streamline processes are unparalleled, and I appreciate that. And I, I'm glad that I'm able to share that with you publicly. Sometimes you all have to step back and not necessarily dwell, but do. Not necessarily complain, but create. And not necessarily get frustrated, but focused. Uh, many thanks to these leaders for their efforts. But I say again, I come as one, but I stand as 10,000. Thank you to our battalion S1, 3, 4 staff, to our special staff chaplain, Sharp, for working hard and to be the best version of yourself every day. Every day. Thank you to our cadre, instructor, drill sergeants, and all leaders from the multiple academic departments. Thank you to the company command teams, Captain Brown Johnson, Wild, Mercado Perez, Beach, Pacencia Stone, Valerie, they didn't get fired, they just got rotated. Uh, Valerie, <laughs> Bloom, First Sergeant Olivo, Brown, Waymire, Rios, Long, Allen Jones. Uh, I wanna put their name out there because they put in the work. We talk about working long hours and days. Uh, these leaders out here are doing it. They're doing it. And, uh, and I, I appreciate, uh, we wanna recognize. So let's please give them a round of applause to those leaders. Hey, thank you to my uh, to Command Sergeant Major, both Nettles and Adams. Man, best battle buddy team, best battle buddy team. And I learned a lot, and I know you pour a lot into me because officers develop officers absolutely, but NCOs develop officers too. And so I appreciate that, and I will take those nuggets with me as I move forward. Uh, but thank you both leaders. Uh, we were a great team, and no words could express how grateful, humble, and honored I am to have been on your team. It takes a village to run this Tredoc machine. It was our destiny and our duty. But I say again, I come as one, but I stand as 10,000. I want to thank the brigade staff, our 502nd partners. I want to, uh, uh, I can't name you all by name, but I'm afraid to forget someone. But I always thank you for supporting the Mustang team. I got to thank my XOs, 
uh, Joe Fisher, Drew Gilker. Man, what have I, I was lucky. And Joe, yes, or uh, Drew, you're right, I hired you. So, uh, so uh, it was a great, a great find. And so uh, I was very blessed to have both you and uh, Drew Fisher. A uh, special thank you to the DCOM team, Tish, Jose, really to all the team, right? And the AMED team, Franz, Pauline, Diane, I don't want to forget everyone. But I'll tell you, those folks behind the camera, right, behind the articles, behind the computers, right, uh, those people make it happen. And what I want to thank you for is sharing our story, right? Because uh, moms and dads send their sons and daughters here, um, and they want to see their children, uh, but they want to see them doing something with a purpose. And uh, I'll tell you, what a great relationship working with them because to get because it wasn't about me it really wasn't about any of these leaders it was about those soldiers becoming civilians to soldiers right and uh, I tell you uh, what a great team and I, I thank them each and in each and every day because uh, we did a lot we did a lot in these last two years and it was about sharing the successes right and the soldiers uh, uh, felt like they had value and purpose and their parents felt like they had value and purpose uh, in coming to the army uh, but I say again I come as one but I stand as 10,000 Thank you to the many mentors, Major General Wong, Temple, General Urson, thank you for being here today. Uh, Colonel Rick Ortiz, Shaw, Douglas, Ursioli, et cetera. There's so many. Sergeant Majors, First Sergeants that are always on a, a phone call away or an office call away. Man, I can't tell you how many times I went in someone's office and closed the door and, uh, but if I didn't have that sounding board. But I tell you, we build a bench. And, uh, and for you leaders that took the time to invest in me, even though that listen to me, whether it's personal or professional, uh, know that I will give back. I will always give back. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, I've always cherished our conversation, and I will continue to do the same for others. Mentorship cannot be forced because it's about relationship. I appreciate each and, of, each and every one of you deeply. I share uh, the ability to share experience and learn from you has been incredible. You know, they say we find strength in the struggles and trials um, and know that uh, our paths will cross again. You have my utmost respect and admiration. But I say again, I come as one, but I stand as 10,000. To Colonel Abraham, Abe, Lovey and their children, welcome to the Mustang team. I'm excited for your future as you take command of this incredible battalion. No one is happier to see you take command than I am today, <laughs> right? And, and, and I share that with you as I got my car parked, right, and the engine's going. Uh, but no, I, I, I'm just, I say that in jest, but, you know, but thank you for your friendship. Abe, you know, and if you guys didn't read the bio, you know, we're both from Georgia, right? So sweet tea, red dirt, right? Uh, that's kind of where we're from. Uh, probably eight years apart, but we're still from Georgia, right? Okay. But thank you for your friendship and know that, hey, man, I'm your biggest supporter. I'll always be a phone call away, and I think you know that. Uh, you'll be awesome. And I'll embed this quote here for you. The past is over. The future may never be. The present is all that exists. Live each moment to the fullest. And I'll tell you, time starts now, brother. Okay? Time starts now, and it'll fly by. But there's no doubt that the Mustang family is gaining an amazing battalion commander. And you will weather the many changes and challenges during your tenure. But no, you come as one, but you stand as 10,000. Okay, people first, winning matters, Army strong, Army medicine starts here, excellent action, training starts here, answering the call anytime, anywhere, Mustang 6, number 11, signing off. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, what a beautiful day. It's, the time has come. I know, Mike, you have your car ready to go running. We laugh and then we joke, but I appreciate everything you've done for me. I'd like to say, like to welcome our distinguished guests, friends and families, special guests and visitors of the 264th Medical Battalion and the 32nd Medical Brigade. First, I want to thank the command team, soldiers, and staffs involved in the execution of today's ceremony. Please give them a round of applause. Command Sergeant Major Adams, Major Gilker, Lieutenant Felix, Ms. Joyner, company command teams, the soldiers, I thank you for your dedication and professionalism that you've shown in welcoming myself and my family to the Mustang Battalion and for making this ceremony a great success. Colonel Anderson, thank you for your inspiring words and for the privilege to command this great battalion. I am truly honored to be returning to the 32nd Medical Brigade as its 264th Battalion Commander. Next, I want to take this opportunity to thank a remarkable command team family. Mike, Karen, Ava, and Garrett, thank you for your warm welcome and Texas hospitality. 
um, and especially the, the warm part of Texas has been very hot here. So <laughs> every commander talks about how gracious the outgoing commander is during their transition. And I can truly say with that, this is the absolute truth. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Karen, for taking care of us while we transition from Virginia. Mike, I consider myself incredibly blessed to take command from an officer of your caliber, one that personifies selfless service and setting the standard. You're leaving me an outstanding organization and a command team that stands ready to execute the Army Department, Army Medical Department mission and the Medco mission. You now join a long lineage of great leaders that have now led the Mustang Battalion. And I cannot thank you and your family enough for your dedication and sacrifices you've made to ensure the mission was met. I wish you and your family continued success as you attend Army War College and take command at Fort Irwin. Finally, I would like to take a moment to recognize my family and friends that are present and online. I am beyond blessed to, with an incredible network of family, friends, mentors that have supported me throughout my career. I'm the son of two soldiers that come from a family of servant leaders. I stand before you today, having been granted the opportunity to continue that role of a servant leader as I join the Mustang family. I would like to say a special thank you to my wife, my beautiful wife, Lovey, our children, Caleb and Leanna, and my parents, Lee and, Love, Lee and Rosie Abraham, father and mother-in-law, James and Tess, for their continuing unwavering support and love throughout my career. In closing, Sergeant Major Adams, team, I look forward to working with you and as we continue to train, develop, generate, and take care of the AMES future soldiers and leaders. Army medicine is Army strong. Army medicine starts here. Excellence in action, answering the call anywhere, anytime. Mustang 6, signing on. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. You are invited to thank and bid farewell to Lieutenant Colonel Story and his family at the front of the stage area. Please form the receiving lines from their right. There will be a reception on